like it's summarizing a dollar amount and let's pretend that uh, it's a management report and typically on management reports management doesn't always really care about the underlying rows here they just want to know that ACME the ACME account which com consists of these three rows well let me back up a step I really want to make sure that, that you guys are going to get some value out of this the report is being grouped by company and I know that because I inserted the group but if I want to check that I can go to report and I can go to change group expert and I can see all of the groups that I have enabled so right now I'm grouping on my company field so what that's doing is that's providing this group header and group footer and that's actually where my company name is going to come from so for the Acme entity quote unquote I have three records that belong to it each record owes us a different amount of money but really, all the boss wants to see is that Acme O74103. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our group name down to our group footer. I'm just using the arrow key to do that. And the reason I'm doing that is because I, I can't move that summary up here or else it stops working. So whenever I want to uh, grant or, or total groups, I always want to include the group name in my group footer. So I'm going to close up my group header. All right, so now we have for these three Acme records, there's our, our grand total. So let's now suppress the details section, which represents uh, the three records that make up that value. So uh, what, what you can actually do here is you're going to want to right click and get into your section expert. And that's just a right click over here and format section. And what the section expert allows you to do actually is change the behavior of report sections. So, so, so again, report sections kind of control how our objects behave here. So for instance, everything in my details section is repeated until my, my details run out. So in this case, three records are returned. We see all three. We don't have to put company three times, or contact rather, three times, because it's going to repeat itself. So when I go to format my section, I want to take that details section right here, and you'll, for every one of these sections, I have these uh, options available. So as I click on each one of these, these change. So for the details, what I'd like to do is actually suppress. And when I do that, it gets grayed out here to remind me that it's suppressed, but what it really does is it actually suppresses the detail section so I don't get the underlying objects which make up that grand total summary so uh, the, the most typical use of this is say like in an invoice report like we're grand totaling like maybe hundreds or thousands of invoices uh, we don't want to know all of the uh, individual line items we just want to know how much the invoice is or how much Acme owes so again very easy I can right click here now that it's suppressed I have a nice little shortcut here. I can right click here and say don't suppress. That opens it back up. Or I can right click here. If I go back to my format section and if I say hide instead of suppress, that behaves a little different. So if I just hide that again, it's grayed out to remind me that something's happening with that section. Hiding is still the same thing as suppressing, by which I mean you just don't see it yet. But, but when you hide something like we have now, you'll see here if I float on my group name here, I get a, a little magnifying glass. And if I double click, that opens up my Acme group onto a whole separate tab. And that's called drill down. The difference between hiding and suppressing is that hiding allows drill down, suppressing does not. What's nice about drilling down, now that I've drilled down my Acme tab, uh, if I choose to print, it's only going to print my Acme tab. Uh, what I often find is there, there's a lot of really neat things that you can do uh, with groups and with drilling down uh, that, that make uh, navigating and uh, printing sections of reports much, much easier. And certainly if I want to reveal those all the time, I can just right click here and show. Now when I do that, because I have this Acme drill down tab showing now, it's going to say, hey, uh, you have a tab, it's going to be closed. So of course, we're going to go ahead and say yes, no big deal.
Okay, let's talk about dates now. What we're going to talk about is how to display the day of the week from a date. <coughs> Excuse me. So, for instance, if we have a date on our report and uh, we want to know whether it was a Monday, uh, a Tuesday, or a Wednesday, so on and so forth, this is actually a two-step process. Uh, the first thing we need to do is find a date to work with. So I'm going to find in my contact table, there actually is a create on date here. There it is. I'm actually going to remove my key three items there. That was just the delete key. I'm going to go ahead and drag my create on. So this shows me when the record was created. So actually the first thing I want to do is get the time precision out of there because people rarely care when when during the day something was created. Incidentally, it's a gold mine system, so it stores no time precision uh, in the, in the date value here. So I'm going to right click, go to Format Field, because it's an underlying data type of date. Crystal knows that. It says, okay, how do you want to see the date? I'm a big fan of this guy right there. Okay, remember real estate is always at a premium on your crystal reports. So now we got to get out of these dates. What day of the week that date occurred on? So again, like I said, that's, that's a two-step process. So the first thing we want to do is create a formula. So we're going to right click, select new, and we're going to call this the day number because that's actually what we're going to get. We want to get the number, Sunday being one, Monday being two, Tuesday being three, so on and so forth, one through seven. Uh, and that's going to return our day number. I hit OK to go into my formula editor. Incidentally, if you're not comfortable with the formula editor or if you really haven't had too much opportunity to get in, into it, uh, I would highly recommend that you just bite the bullet because the formula editor really is, is, is where most of the power in Crystal comes from. And you only have to learn it once. And honestly, it's really not all that bad. I'm going to cheat now. I'm going to go back to my own blog posting and find my crystal reports code. This is the way programmers always do it. They just only learn something once. They never have to worry about it again. So what I want to do is actually use the day of week function against that date. So what I do here in my formula is I just type in the uh, day of week function and I'm going to pass my create on field to that, right? And then I'm going to close my parentheses because remember a function needs something to chew on and we feed it that something to chew on in parentheses. Always check your syntax with your little X2 guy up there. Nowhere is found. Great. So again, when I'm creating a formula, I always, always, always drag it right next to the field I'm working with. That way I can understand what's going on. So again, my day of week function is just returning the number position of the day. And anyone who's done any kind of work with, with dates uh, the world has this concept of day position in a week and almost always Sunday is day number one so keep that in mind so now that I have my number I want to convert my number to, to like like the word Monday or Tuesday right so I'm going to create yet another formula and I'm going to call this day name and what we're going to have here is a formula working on a formula, which is a really good way to build reports. I'm going to cheat again, looking here. What was it? Weekday name is the function I want. So I want to do weekday name. And what weekday name is expecting is a numerical value. It's expecting uh, 1 through 7. So I'm, going to, I'm not going to pass it my date. I'm going to pass it my day number, which is that formula we just created. Check my syntax. Great. So now my day name is actually looking at this value, which is derived from looking at that field. Very, very typical situation to see in Crystal where you have formulas calling other formulas. Uh, because uh, oh, it's just a really good way to build a report. Because anyone who's out there who, who has been building uh, their own reports knows that management always wants it, something a little different a couple months down the road. And you want to leave yourself that flexibility. 
So now that we have it working in, in theory, we understand how to how to get that day name from the day number which we get from the create on. You know, there's a there's a hole in the boat. Uh, let's do it in one formula. Well, maybe we can clean that up a little bit. So I just want to show you that that using the two formulas is no different from creating a big unified formula. We'll call this day of week calculation. So again, the first thing we needed was our day number. Was our week. And again, I'm passing my date field to that. And now that we have that value, we're actually going to nest this value here within another function. which was our day name. I'm going to move this down just one line. You see how that's working? There's a function within a function. So, and then the way this works when you nest functions, it, it always works from the inside out. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to grab day a week from that date, and then it's going to pass that resulting number finally to weekday name. Check your syntax, save, and I'm going to just delete these items here. And there's our day of week calculation. And now that's just returning the, uh, the real name of our, uh, of our date without having to jump through two formulas. I actually do recommend that you use two formulas because you, you want to get into the habit uh, of having formulas, that kind of formulas, it's, it's just a good design choice. So actually at this point we are almost out of time. Um, I'd like to invite you all to hit star six and unmute your lines and hit me with any questions or comments or maybe challenges that you've been having uh, at your office with your crystal. Okay, well, in that case, certainly I'm always looking for the next batch of crystal tips and tricks, so please feel free to email me at justin at marksgroup.net. I'd love to hear your suggestions or, or your comments. Uh, again, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, have a great day.